Confirming this trend earlier this week, Alibaba said that it was launching a Netflix-inspired type of video streaming service. Well, in the U.S., there's no end of water cooler discussion about the best content being designed for streaming services like Netflix. And as mentioned, a number of content providers in China are also now developing shows that they're hoping to bring to markets like the U.S. And one cord cutter who's been watching the space is Joel Backler. He's the author of China Goes West. And he spoke with our Owen Fairclough, who began by asking him about what kinds of shows Chinese viewers are really hooked on. I think if you look at China and what makes Chinese consumers unique is the fact that they're looking to consume this content, not just in their home, but also on their mobile devices. Uh, mobile internet for many consumers is their primary way to actually access the internet. Um, and if anybody's ever been traveling in China, you'll see that if you're in Beijing and you want to commute from the west side in Haidian to the east side in Chaoyang, you have yourself a good hour and a half to probably catch up on your favorite shows. So it's this whole idea that the TV experience isn't limited to your living room, and quite frankly, it's not even limited to your house, that I think is really developing a very unique kind of watching habit in China. Do you see anything in your, when you mentioned Beijing in China, do you see anything different in the way that people consume these shows on their phones that is different to the way people here in the US or Europe might do that? Um, I, I think there's not much different in terms of what, they, what they're watching or, or, or I guess their devices, but the content itself is a bit different. So unlike the U.S. where a lot of what we'll watch might be Netflix or HBO Go, Chinese consumers, while they're watching shows like Game of Thrones, they're watching House of Cards, they're also watching original content produced by companies like Qi and Youku. This content's Chinese language first, and it's something that's very attractive to them. Additionally, these content providers are partnering with mm -hmm. um, companies in Korea, for example, trying to find those top Korean shows that are more attractive for a Chinese marketplace. So there's a lot of diversity in terms of what types of content they're watching. And I guess the challenge, you mentioned some of those companies who are almost like the equivalent of Netflix and Hulu and so on. They want to come bring that model overseas. How, what kind of content do you think they might produce for, say, an American market or a European market? So if you look at these companies, it's a fiercely competitive market. There's about four companies at the top that are all competing for various market share. I mean, Alibaba actually um, just announced this past week that they too want to throw their hat in the ring. So it's, getting, it's only getting more competitive. What you are seeing is Le TV, or Chinese it's called Le Shi. They're looking to not only be in China, but they're looking, as you said, to overseas markets. They just opened an office fairly recently in the United States. Um, where they're not only trying to bring content over, but one of their bigger kind of strat parts of their strategy is owning that whole chain. So they're entering mobile devices. They're bringing TVs over. So they'll not only have the content, they'll also have the point of access for that content. And I think that's something that's a bit unique looking at their strategy. So if I understand it, they would sort of attract consumers by giving them the whole package and kind of lock you in in that respect. Is there any, are there any disadvantages to that? A consumer is going to say, well, I might like the device, but I don't necessarily want that particular content. I mean, my personal opinion is I think it's going to be a very difficult battle for a company like Le TV um, to expand in the US with that strategy. I think American consumers, you know, obviously Apple is very big here. You have companies like Samsung. It takes a lot of investment to build a consumer brand in the United States. A lot of Chinese companies and companies from other markets have tried but it takes a big investment into marketing, branding, public relations, a lot of areas that traditionally Chinese companies haven't focused on. And so I hope La TV can prove me wrong, but I'd say based on previous experience, I think if they're going to have a very hard time convincing American consumers to give up their iPhone and buy their own, their own kind of equivalent, I guess. Just on a cultural level, Joel, we see, unfortunately, very few Chinese movies and Chinese content, uh, making it overseas, they tend to be restricted to art house cinemas and that kind of thing. Do you think these content providers have got an uphill battle persuading US consumers, European consumers, consumers around the world that China has this really rich culture and that they can make great TV out of it in theory? Actually, I think that's where things are actually a lot more, op a lot more optimistic. If you look at just in terms of the movie theaters, for example, uh, there's a Chinese company called Dalian Wanda 
they acquired AMC movie theaters a couple years ago for a multi-billion deal. Um, the company has been thriving since then, and they're doing an excellent job, not just in the movie theater business, but also expanding other partnerships in Hollywood. Um, if, you took a t if you take a deeper look at the collaboration between Hollywood and China right now, you're seeing a tremendous amount of activity. And so that's going to translate not just to more American-influenced movies in China, but also American movies in the U.S. that have kind of Chinese characteristics. So I think what has traditionally been an American movie or a Chinese movie, I think that's going to become a little bit more blended than maybe it's been previously.